All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Coffee with Quarto and Neovim. And it's been a while since the last video and the reason is not that we didn't have new cool features to show, rather the opposite. Whenever I wanted to make a new video, it turned out I got another idea for a cool thing I wanted to integrate in this showcase config or even directly to the Otter Envim or the Quarto Envim plugin. So I did that and then it took some time and the video would get longer and I decided that now is the time to finally actually showcase what's been happening. So let's jump into my terminal and another thing you notice is um, if I open this you see down here, um, no here, yes, uh, that the keys I press show up. Uh, this is not a feature of Quadro, just a, uh, the screen key plugin, uh, the screen key software I'm using so you can follow along easier. So the first thing you notice is we get highlighted code chunks, which is really cool, um, done through a, a plugin, and I will link those plugins below as well. Uh, and then another feature that was added directly to Otto Envim and Quarto Envim is the ability to get code completion uh, for HTML. So here we can get hover documentation for this. Hover, and this is nice because we can go down here, um, press GX to open the website, for example. Mozilla documentation is very good. And you also get code completion, just like for other codes. Uh, just like for other code chunks. And this is enabled then by default in the Kickstarter configuration. We can jump to the previous and next code chunks using double square brackets. And in this code chunk, I want to demonstrate that we can get document symbols for language servers that support this. I know R does, G capital S. We get a list of all the symbols we have now, right now and we, we can jump to them by pressing enter. Just jump back using control O. Now this is R and if I were lazy, I maybe I would have just typed the equal sign to create a new variable, but R uses the assignment operator. And we can fix this by just using the automated code chunk formatting, leader LF just format the code chunk um, and you see the equal signs are replaced with proper formatting. Same if I did this here, now you want equal sign here, wrong indentation, all that kind of stuff. Still a valid R code, but it just doesn't look nice. But if we format it, it's all nice and pretty. We can now also preview equations thanks to a plugin using leader EH. I mean, the shortcut will can, can change, but you can configure it to whatever feels comfortable for you. I just want to showcase all these cool plugins. We can hover an equation or we can toggle displaying all equations with virtual text user, using leader EE. And then we get those in here. Uh, there have also been some uh, performance improvements uh, for Python because there was a bug in in this interaction between the Python PyWrite language server and how NeoVim talks to language servers, where those two would basically fight over who creates all those file watchers to watch for changes, and then way too many file watchers would be created. Um, and there's a fix for this. I added it to the config, just straight from the discussion on GitHub. Um, in the future, we may not even need the fix because it will be fixed directly in NeoVim, but for now, we have this sort of workaround to tell the language server that it's, it's fine, you don't need to create all these extra uh, watches, which means uh, if I close this here, this file will now open instantly instead of having to take two seconds or something for the language server to start up and for those two to fight over those file watches. And we also don't get this scrolling delay I would sometimes get in Python files, which is super nice. But the big, big, big thing for today or for, for this, this video is that we can now show images directly in NeoVim. Uh, using the amazing image.envim plugin. So if I hover, go over this line, we, we get this image and it's just in here in our terminal. Um, and it does also work for remote files. So it's just fetching it from the URL and compressing it to fit into our terminal. I have configured it such that it only shows plugins, uh, shows images on the current line, but you can also configure it to show all of them at the same time and keep them while scrolling. I just like to keep it a little bit cleaner while I'm working on other things. Now this requires uh, any terminal that supports the Kitty image protocol. I'm using uh, the latest version of Kitty 
I don't think it's required to have at least this version, um, but uh, West Helm would also work. And it even works inside of Tmux. So if you're using Tmux and Kitty together, it works. You do need the latest version of both of them. And I have some code in my config or in the config I'm also showing you uh, that checks if you have all these things enabled. There's some, some more work to be, do, to be done to enable this. So head over to the site for the image engine plugin and just check those boxes and make sure to install all the dependencies. But then you get these cool things. Um, Another thing is I'm using uh, the Vim Slime plugin to send code to integrated terminals, which I quite, like. I quite like. I like this freedom of just being able to move between buffers and terminals. However, if you prefer more of a notebook style, let's close this here. There is the really cool Molten NVim uh, plugin that makes a Jupyter notebook in the background basically and sends code to this and then displays the output directly underneath code chunks, which is kind of cool. Uh, and we now have an integration with this. Uh, let's activate this and don't think too much about the shortcut because this is just uh, me for, for development, for trying out stuff. It is not enabled by default uh, in the Kickstarter configuration. Um, but what we can do is we can evaluate code chunks here and we get the output underneath here. Okay, uh, that's all I have for today and I'll see you in the next video.